Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. Look who I've got with me today. It's actor <laughs> Mark Espinosa with me. So welcome, Mark. Good to see you. Yeah, this this is a, a a big one, not just for me, but but for the the family. A lot of nine hundred two one zero fans in the family, and most of the time they're like, I'll, I'll be like, you want to watch? Uh, you know, I just put an interview up. You want to watch it? And they're like, ah, we talk to you all the time. We don't need. To. <laughs> but now Gabrielle came on nine hundred two one zero. Everybody got excited, and now I was like, hey, I've got. Uh, I've got her husband coming on. And, uh, <laughs> her cheating husband. <laughs> her cheating husband. I, I'd, like to, like, I'd like to establish something real quick. She cheated first. It, That's it's like right. Absolute, I've been, I've been mis, uh, mis, uh, not misinterpreted, mis, uh, uh, misrepresented. Misrepresented all these years. And people will stop. If you're that cheating husband, she cheated first. <laughs> Come on, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, she was, I was telling you off camera, she was just uh, terrific. She's, she's so talented and she's involved oh. in so much. You know, she's she, just busy. She's, she's one of the most amazing, one of my favorite people on the planet, absolutely, but one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She, yeah. she really is extraordinary. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I, I'm used to with this podcast, I'll I deal with a lot of publicists or managers, you know, agent on occasion and stuff. So I sent my, you know, my little pitch to see if maybe she'd want to come on the show. And she just answered me directly, which doesn't happen very often. I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. That's yeah. pretty nice. But that's kind of how she is. She just she's very down to earth. She's very down to earth. She, she's also, you know, she's also very selective about what she does. Yeah. Um, so you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying I get some some award, but uh, yeah, she's not she doesn't always respond that quickly to everyone. She can't. She's pretty busy. Well, of course. Yeah. 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 Yes, I'm not encouraging everybody to go contact her. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was terrific. So, so Mark, I like to to start here. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. What made you want to become an actor? Okay. Um, that's a really long story, so I can't, I can't, if I gave you the whole, uh, the whole story, it would take forever, but I will say that I started out in visual arts just as a kid. Okay. So growing up, that's all I wanted to do was paint and draw. Uh, yeah. I, I was a very shy kid. Uh, I still don't enjoy being the center of attention socially. Right. I right. love, I love being the center of attention on stage. And there, there are basically two kinds of actors. The ones who need to be the center of attention all the time. It doesn't mean right. that they're narcissists or egoists, but they they like being in the middle of it all. Then then the other actors who much prefer to have their private time and they're they are the observing kind of guys who people and you know they they enjoy and thrive on being the center of attention on stage, but really shy from it off stage. I'm 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 more of the latter latter brand. So as a kid growing up, for me, art was, was everything. It just, I could draw and paint and people would leave you alone. Uh, and it kind of evolved into um, auditioning for a play to be in the chorus of something. And yeah. uh, uh, I did that and putting on the costume and having the curtain go open and you realize you're not you, you're the character. And it was, this, right. it was in high school. There was this incredible license to say and do things you would never do in your normal life. And that, that to me was the real hook. Uh, yeah. Why and how I started enjoying theater. It wasn't for the applause as much as it was the license to basically create a three-dimensional painting. In my mind, I was part of I love something that. that was three-dimensional. And I enjoyed that part of it quite a bit. Uh, I, my undergrad, for a variety of reasons, was in marketing economics. and. I worked for a company called Rockwell International uh, yeah. on defense contracts for a couple of years out of college, but I was doing theater at night. And at the age of 25, I, I knew that if I didn't do something bold with my life then, because the job was not, I was not happy at the job. Right. And I was considering going back to grad school. There, there are a few things that were going on, but I, I took a trip to New York to interview with Columbia University uh, for a fellowship. And um, I saw a play that night while I was in New York 
that changed my life um, because I knew that after seeing the play, it was called Sunny in the Park with George by Sondheim. And after nice. seeing the play, um, I realized that if I didn't do something really bold that I loved, that I was passionate about at 25, I wasn't gonna do it at 35 or 45 because right. life, life takes over. So either I do it now or I don't ever do it. And that was the, that was the real impetus to quit my job, move to New York. People thought I was out of my mind and I probably- That's a bold wasn't. move. It, it, well, at 25, it wasn't. I mean, yeah. it, it, yes, <laughs> but at 25, at 25, you, you figure you've got 75 more years to burn. So in my mind, doing it then was a risk, but I was 25 years old. If I decided I didn't like it at 27, I could still go back and do something else. That's right. Uh, but what I loved about it in high school and having license to be characters that you, that you weren't um, in life, that only became more and more uh tempting as I went to acting school and and realized that I was how much I really loved the craft of acting and uh I you know I wouldn't was talking to my dad this morning he's 90 uh, as a matter of fact we were talking about the journey because he was not he was so angry with me for quitting a corporate job and well he's worried about you he he was worried but he was he was a little little peeved that I wasn't doing what he wanted me to do right and but I, I remember telling him even this morning, I was saying, Dad, I wouldn't, if I had to go back and do it again, and it has not been an easy journey. If I had sure. to do, if I had to go back and make the same decision, I would make the exact same decision again, without a doubt, because it is, it is really the journey, not the destination. As cliche as it sounds, at, at my age, I look back and I realize that abs- that's absolutely the truth. I wouldn't trade any of it. I wouldn't trade any of it. Yeah, it's terrific. Does he look at it differently now? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. He's my biggest fan now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's terrific. So when you were 25 and made that decision, were you a single guy or did you have, you know, attachments that you were no. also making this decision for? No, no. I, I was, I was, I was seeing, you know, I, I had girlfriends back then, but I, they were, it was, nothing was serious. You know, yeah. 25 years yeah, old. Yeah. And, and I mean, I won't, I won't even get into all that, but, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think back, thinking back, it wasn't a hard decision. It's almost like, yeah. I don't have a choice. If well, if you were unhappy, this, pardon? if you were unhappy with what you were doing, what, what's the downside? Yeah, I mean, this was, this was, you know, not to get on a whole other topic, but it was the mid eighties. Uh, it was sort of the height of that era of acquisition and everyone around me was so materialistic. And yeah. they were nice people, but it was really about owning things and, and having things and, and accumulating as much as possible. And that that really wasn't who I was. And so the mentality yeah. that surrounded me was not was not mine. And it wasn't where I, I wasn't happy with that, with my generation. And I wasn't happy in the workplace, even though I liked the people I worked with. Right. Uh, the, the the concept of what I was doing in the defense industry was not. I just wasn't, I wasn't, it's what, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. It was almost against my principles even, but it was the, a good job that I got out of college. And I just thought that's what you're supposed to do. You know, well, so like I, when you, when you were in high school, did you, were you taking theater and, and that type of stuff in high school or did you just come to acting late? No, I, mean, I, did, I did a couple of plays. I took one year of drama while I was, while I was in the high school, but, my, again, my thing was art. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted yeah. to, I wanted to live in an attic in Paris and and die penniless, you know, but but famous, you know, with a beret yeah. on my head. Uh, that sounds uh, pretty good. <laughs> uh, do you uh, but, do you still paint? Uh, I I sketch on occasion. I don't I don't draw as much as I used to, and I, I will get back to it. I I, I still love it. I still love yeah. it. Yeah. I think my uh, my my wife. I was telling you she works for Live Nation, but she's a right. she's a painter, and and she that's her um, relaxation. So so she Absolutely. paints she paints and then donates. It, it drives me crazy, but she donates the paintings for for charity. You know, lets them auction them off or or whatever, and and right. and that, that kind of that that gives her a sense that she's you know she's helping and that relaxes her. And, and then I'm the guy that's 
going behind her and trying to buy all these paintings back, you know, and, and hide them from her. So she doesn't know that I did that. I've, I've been somewhat successful. <laughs> I got well, a few her, of though, them if, that, if that's how she, I mean, what, what, what great, what better, yes, it's great to get paid, but what greater satisfaction is there than, than sharing your art that with right. someone? And especially if it's going to a good cause, uh, that's more, even more motivation yeah, uh, to do what you do the way you do it. I don't. I don't know if you're familiar with Sunday in the Park with George, but that is that is the the crux of the artist. It's a fictitious account of of George Seurat's life. Okay, and the artist's dilemma in it is: Do I paint to please other people and sell my work, or do I paint to please myself and hope people appreciate it? I mean, that, that's it. that's a very that's a very you know uh, pared down. Uh, assessment of it but that is the, the, the truth as an artist do you do it to make other people happy to, to make a million bucks or do you do it and have them see you for who you are as an artist and it's yeah. it's a dilemma that i think every artist goes through at some point yeah Actor, I, artist, I, musician, I love that I, I know she'll love that too because she feels exactly that way you know it's it's her way of expressing herself Right. And she's not doing it for somebody else. Now, on occasion, you know, if somebody asks her to do something for her, she might, you know, to, especially right. like uh, we'll get the family stuff. They'll be like, hey, can you paint a picture of the house? That type of thing. She'll do that once in a while stuff. But but most time when she's happiest, it's just doing it for herself. And I, you know, I have no artistic ability, but I watch her paint. Uh, never, never say never. Never well, so so my expression has come through this podcast, which a lot of people would say that is not art, but it's a way that I can be creative because I'm not very creative. creative another way. Yeah. Look, if we, if we if we try to please the critics, if that is our objective uh, as an actor, artist, entertainer, whatever, if if we all we do is try to please the critics, we're going to be chasing our tails forever. Yeah, you're you right. Know, to hell with the critics. Look, they hated. Yeah. They hated. Uh, they hated uh, uh, Citizen Kane. Yeah, right. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, what's your like? What do you have a preferred medium, or do you just kind of go with whatever mood you're in? Well, well <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna sound so hypocritical. Sometimes you gotta take it where the money is, uh, yeah. but you bring what you what you do in your your uh, uh, your. Uh, your MO is to that, you know, it's, it, I, I love theater. I love a live audience. Yeah. But I also love TV and I love the ensemble part of the TV. I've, I've done very few films and I've had good experiences, but I love TV. I love the sense yeah. of a season and creating a character and having an ensemble, not just of the actors, but the crew as well. And you're all in it together. And that to me yeah. feels a bit more like the theater experience. Uh, I love theater. I love doing eight shows a week, but sadly, it's really difficult to make a, a decent living doing right. theater. In my mind, I, had this, I was having this conversation with a friend in Atlanta this morning who I did theater with a while back. And you know, in my mind, I would be 60 years old. And at that point, I could retire from TV because I would have made enough money and I could just do theater the rest of my life. Yeah, and That was kind of what was in the back of my mind. I'm a little older than 60 at this point. I'm still scratching to make my, you know, my, 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 uh, my, uh, you know, my preferred lifestyle. Yeah. Um, but I still want to get back to doing theater. I absolutely. Yeah. I that's, I, that's, I think that's, that's, I, I hear that a lot from, from actors that, you know, they're, they, they love theater. It's just difficult to make a full-time living, living doing theater. Yeah, it's really hard. I've got I've got a lot of friends in New York to do theater, but they have to they have to live in New York to get the regional theater auditions that they want. Right. So they're rarely in New York. They're always working in Chicago or, or Minneapolis or Atlanta or wherever. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you froze up for just a second, but you're back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it was as far as anybody knows 
It was just seconds. <laughs> they didn't see me crawling around on my knees where, where I have my little uh, modem and uh, uh, unplugging and rebooting, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Such a glamorous yeah. life, man. I, I know. I know. It's uh, that I think everybody has gotten so used to Zoom. We all just accept the problems that come with it. Right. You know, a couple of years ago, nobody was using Zoom. Now we're all using it. Yeah. Can you remember yeah. life before cell phones even? You know, I can, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and it, and we did fine. Yeah. I mean, Kill it was every- occasionally a pain to go to, you know, have to find a pay phone to make a call, but we right, did right. fine. But I remember the days of coming home and the first thing you did was check your answering machine. Let's see who called me today. All right. It was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you didn't get all the junk calls back then. Exactly. Exactly. I get a ton of phone calls now, but it's people trying to sell me warranties for cars or uh, telling me that my uh, my accounts have been closed and yeah, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. I know. It's ridiculous. When, when uh, my parents, we moved when I was eight years old and we moved kind of out into the country and we had a party line. And I've said that to you before, and they they didn't know what that was. Oh my God! Yeah. But we shared it with like we had we only had a couple of different houses that were neighbors to us, but they we all shared the same line. Yeah. Because they hadn't run them yet, I guess that that went on for like a year or two when we first moved out there. But I always right. remember there was two old uh, older I should say ladies that were constantly on the phone. You couldn't get on there because <laughs> they were on there so much. And they were on there, and they and while you were on there, they were probably on there, and they were they knew oh, everything yeah. you were doing. As soon as you picked up the phone, I, you could hear it. one of them would say, "Oh, I think somebody's on here with us." And then you know, being I was always a, a shy kid, so I'd quickly hang up the phone. But eventually, <laughs> you have to work up the courage and be like, "I I need to use the phone." <laughs> I chopped my arm off, lady. I need to use the phone. <laughs> yeah, I need to I use need the to phone. Call a doctor. Yeah, but nobody knows what that is anymore. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you brought up you brought up earlier about uh, you know needing that kind of personal space. You know, being when you're not on stage or in front of a a camera, and it, it's it's been surprising to me to find uh, as many actors that are introverts as I did. I wasn't uh-huh. expecting that because I'm an introvert at heart. But it surprised me that there were so many actors like that. But a lot of people are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, yes. I wouldn't even say it's 50-50. I wouldn't know what the proportions are. But yeah. after doing it for almost 40 years, you recognize you meet someone and you can kind of tell which camp they're in. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. So. <laughs> well, it's one of those that if I'm in a comfortable situation, you know, where I'm comfortable, I'm pretty outgoing. Yeah. But if it's a new situation where I may not know all the people or something, I'm usually kind of reserved. I stick to myself. Yeah, if it's if it's two or three people at dinner, or if it's you're you're meeting a couple of friends for beers and you've got new people are joining, that's very different from being in a, in a room right. filled with people where you're, you're kind of meant to circulate. I I tend to hang out by the food or the the bar. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, <laughs> you know, and you just kind of wait for people to talk to you. Yeah, it's not a bad way to do it. So do you like like for me, when when I get overwhelmed, the way I recharge is I need alone time, kind of quiet time. Are are you yeah. like that? Very much so. I I, I used yeah. to run more than I do now, and running was, yeah. was that time. Uh now I do stuff in the garden or I'll read. Um uh, and that that makes a big that makes a big difference for me once I have that time to charge up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm exactly that, uh, that way. Now my wife, exact opposite, you know, she recharges by getting out there and being around people. She kind of gets energy off of that. I'm not sorry. (laughs) That'll wear me out real quick. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you my, uh, sad running story. This is (laughs) okay. I've got a couple of those. Yeah, I still myself. run a little bit. I, I still right. try to run a few times a week and kind of, but there was a time several years ago where I, I had set this goal. I said I was going to run 2,000 miles in a year. 
right? Which is pretty ambitious. That's ambitious, yeah. So, and and I mean, I was beating myself to death, but I got to December 30th and I needed 13 miles to hit my 2000 mile goal, which nobody cared about, but it was a big deal to me. So I needed 30, I was like, I'm going to run a half marathon last day of the year and we'll hit this 2000. It's, it's going to be just a, a big deal. So I go to bed on the 30th. I wake up on the 31st, uh, stomach flu. Oh, didn't, no. Yeah, I didn't get to finish it. So I, oh, 1987. No. Yeah. It took me, like, I had, I stopped running for months after that because it just, I don't know, it just kind of took the wind out of us. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. But hey, look, if eventually I, if I, I got squeeze, back to it. If I can squeeze out two miles now, I'm happy. I just need to know that I can keep doing it. That's, that's it. That's it. And I, it's so much easier on all the parts. <laughs> yes. Couple miles, and that's that's all I do. I'll, I'll lift my weights, and I'll get on the treadmill and run yeah. a mile, two miles, and that's enough. No more. Oh, I used to that. love running. I used to love running my eight or nine or ten miles. Uh, yeah. But you know, you get to a certain point, you realize, oh wait a second, I can't bend over and tie my shoes right now. No, I'm and in a lot of pain. Yeah. yeah. Did uh, did you play sports through school? Uh, uh, I played tennis and I ran uh, as yeah. a kid. So that, those were my sports. I played the single singular sports. Uh, I was I was a very heavy kid, part of my growing up years, and so I didn't I didn't do a lot of athletics. I uh, I read a lot. I yeah, me the, too. I watched a lot of old uh, sci fi stuff. I watched a lot of TV. I was pretty much to myself. I I, I don't. I like team sports. I like um, I like I like working with an ensemble. I, I love that. Yeah. But I wasn't very good at it as a kid, and the pressure, as you would know, it, the pressure from other kids was was harsh. It was hard. So I yeah. found a lot of solace, and I picked up a tennis racket one day and just started hitting it against the wall, and that that changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I always I I was talking with a, a lady yesterday that. Um, we, we, um, shared the anxiety that we felt, uh, when we had to go to art class because, art class? They, because you know, everybody loved art class. I hated art class because, really? because I just, I was, I was in my mind so terrible at it. I just, it stressed me out. So everybody's in there having this great time and stuff. And I'm like counting the seconds and sweating and just praying. Wow. She doesn't ask me to draw anything. Huh. I, I, <laughs> I've talked with people about that. Uh, Cause people say, I can't draw. I can't draw. And I know people who've trained themselves to draw. Yeah. But when you, for instance, we, if you pick up a pencil and someone says, draw, draw this glass and yours looks like that. Well, you know what? That's what you see. That doesn't yeah. mean it's bad. That's what you see. That's what you and your hand and your brain coordinate onto a piece of paper. That doesn't make it bad. That just makes it what you see in that moment. I think and, I needed you as an art teacher. Well, you know, I, I had a great, I had great art teachers because they, they, it was never judgment on. It wasn't the qual, it wasn't their perceived quality. It was, it was your expression that mattered. Yeah, and I had some great art teachers, and this was in a little, you know, Texas town. Uh, it truly is. It is, is it, like anything else, it is, a, it is a form of expression and therapy that um, you, can't, um, you can't buy that. You can't buy that kind of therapy. Yeah. Because it's you generating the idea outward. And that is so important. It's so important for kids, especially kids who don't think they can do it. Uh, yeah. Um, affirming the fact that they can do it, it's just different. Um, it, it can be life-changing, you know. Um, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Yeah, I love that. That's, a, that's such a great way to uh, to look at it. And being fair, it wasn't my art teacher that was the problem, really. It was the other kids, you know, because kids oh, can uh, be a little rough, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't even know that they were that bad. I was just a shy kid. Back then, yeah. I was just a shy kid, which I think we all kind of go through some of that at different times in our lives. You know, you go through those awkward phases, and that's that's probably all it was. <laughs> but obviously obviously it still means something because you're talking about it yeah. yeah yeah isn't it funny when you get older the things oh. that stick with you absolutely absolutely you know i i can still you know there's certain uh places in my life or, or parts of my life 
where I may have said something or just had, you know, just had that awkward feeling. And and there's times where it'll still hit me. I'll be like, oh man, that was, that was pretty rough. That was pretty rough. And I was like, that was 40 years ago. <laughs> oh, hey, look, dude. I, I remember, I'll never forget because I I love to dance and I've oh, actually nice. got some rhythm, but I'm very, very uptight about dancing in front of people. And I'll never forget yeah. auditioning for a college play. And the woman who was choreographing choreographing this musical, it was an audition. And made fun of me and oh no that's terrible I, all these years later i cannot dance in a musical i'll go home and i'll practice i'm i'm i'm, I'm 62 today as a matter of fact oh thank I, you to this happy day, birthday <laughs> thank you but to this day i panic uh yeah but two of my daughters went to cotillion and they're in the in the end of this of the of the season of dance lessons etc cetera, etc cetera. The, the parents come in they dance you dance with your daughters but even then i'm i'm just pitting out i'm sweating so much i'm so nervous that i'm going to embarrass her um I, I was up for the first national company of rent years and years and years ago wow made it all the way down to the final until it was a dance audition the dance part and i froze and i, I just walked out and i don't sweat normally I was just yeah. soaked. Yeah, it's soaked. a miserable feeling. And it's that voice, and, and, and yet you can't. You, know, you, you could deal with it. I could have. I could have learned to deal with it. I chose not to, but it's still yeah. there. That haunting sense of like he's terrible is back in the back of your mind. Yeah. Uh, so you live with it, you know. <laughs> like like if I have, uh, I don't really have nightmares, but if I have one, like an unsettling <laughs> dream, it's usually something <laughs> stupid that happened. You know when I was a teenager or something. It's just something that's ridiculous. Yeah. And you wake up and you're like, oh, that's pretty rough. <laughs> it's not like werewolves or Frankensteins are after you. It's like, you know, no, something you did I, as a kid. It, yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, I'm uh, at a party and said something that everybody thought was absolutely fine, but for whatever reason, I obsessed over it and thought it was stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I always thank goodness that has stopped. Yeah. yeah. You know, for whatever reason, as I got older, I kind of just grew out of that nonsense. Yeah. That's a, but it's, a lot of people go through that. Yeah. It's nice, it's nice to be able to peel away that stuff the older you get. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and go, all right, I'm done with that. Bye. No, yeah, you can kind of laugh about it when you get older, hopefully. Sure. Hopefully. My yeah, uh, you see me laughing, right? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> my uh my wife had her cotillion in uh el paso when she oh, really? was yeah yeah she uh she had family out there she grew up here in west virginia um but had uh family her dad was from juarez and, oh, and yeah. lived in el paso growing up so her family was out there and they they threw it for her. so oh, she wow. was as that's the first time she'd met a lot of that side of the family i always thought that was kind of a neat story so she got yeah. to that's kind of kind of neat that's a that's a, a fun event. More, oh, yeah. more people need to experience that. That's a fun event. Yeah. yeah. The girl yeah. Unless you're really it. nervous about dancing. <laughs> <laughs> could you did you dance with your daughters in private and do okay? No. No. Yeah. I it's funny because I don't dance. I mean, I, I I lived in Europe for a while, I lived in Germany for a while. And, yeah. and you know, you drink enough German beer and you go out to a club. I'm the best dancer on the floor yeah. in my mind. I have no, I'm not, I'm not uh, shy about that. But in reality, I, I don't, I don't get a lot of pleasure out of it. And probably just yeah. because it's in the back of my head, you know. Yeah, no, I totally get that. Like if, if I'm not paying attention and I'm just by myself, you know, maybe, maybe my wife will catch me or something and, I might actually be moving with the you know the music and have a little huh. little rhythm, but as soon as I realize that I'm doing that or somebody says something, it's gone. I can't <laughs> I can't find it again. Funny how that works. I'm like it's in there somewhere. I just don't know how to <laughs> tap into it. <laughs> That's funny. Where uh, where'd you live in Germany? Uh, I I spent most most of the time was in Stuttgart. I had friends who worked for the. Uh, the, uh, the entertainment branch of the military. Oh, so I would okay. go there and I would direct plays on occasion or do some acting workshops, things like that. 
What's uh, uh, what's that near? Frankfurt. What's Stuttgart near? Stuttgart is probably well, I'm thinking train. It's probably a couple hours south of Frankfurt. Uh, it's between okay. Frankfurt and it's 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 the biggest city between Frankfurt and Munich on that on that stretch. Uh, and there, there's there's a big military presence in Stuttgart. Um, yeah. But I, I also performed cabarets for a while, so I was doing them in Stuttgart and Frankfurt mostly. And that, that's a, a, around 2000, 2001. So yeah, I do love to sing. Nice. I do sing. Yeah. yeah, very nice. I was going to ask. Yeah, my, uh, my brother uh, spent three years in Wiesbaden, which oh, yeah. is near Frankfurt. That's why I was yeah. asking. I was like, I think that's near Frankfurt. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah very nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you – if you uh sang now do you get do you get nervous singing or is that okay no it's funny because I, I was also as a young kid told you can't sing or you sound terrible or whatever and that to me was different i don't i don't know really know why but i, I love to sing and i have been known to to break out a few danny boys in the middle of a bar oh and, yeah nice. many a time i have no i have no qualms about letting out a tune um if I, if I feel like it, you know, if I feel yeah. like it, but I, I'm not, I think maybe I'm more worried about being perfect or making a bad move as a dancer and looking terrible than I am about hitting a wrong note. Right. I, I can't even, I don't even know why that is, but if my voice cracks or maybe you can't hit a note and you have to do something different, it's a different sensation for me than it is, you know, putting going in the wrong direction in a dance move, you know. I think it's funny that it uh, it works that way. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. So, so everybody loved you. I told you from our family nine zero two one zero. But when I think of you, I'm always thinking married with children. <laughs> I love it. I I caught I caught both grief and and praise for doing that and. Uh, I, I've said this, and it, sadly, it's been misinterpreted a couple of times, but I had more fun in those two weeks with those guys. I did two, two episodes with them than I did in most other jobs because it was just fun. Yeah. And, and they were so professional. They were such amazing, the cast, amazing, yeah. amazing people. And I had a great time. And they were very much in tune with each other, very much in tune with their show. Um, it was just pure fun. It was fun. And, yeah. I, and I love doing comedy. I don't get a chance to do comedy very often. And I had a blast. And and Christina Applegate is amazing. Just, just an yeah. amazing, amazing woman. Person, period. Yeah, yeah. That, that's awesome. That Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill, he's, he's awesome. Love the guy. Yeah, he's, he's kind of amazing. They're oh, supposed to be bringing that show back. Maybe, uh, maybe you make an appearance. I'd love that. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I try to avoid I try to avoid using bad accents, you know, and, and I've really worked long and hard in this career to not be the stereotype because I, I love, I'll never get hired to be the stereotype. Typically. Yeah, I'm just too, I'm too I'm too I'm too vanilla looking, you know, um, so no pun intended, but <laughs> I would do that. I would put on a bad accent to do that character again in a heartbeat. Yeah. They were yeah. a blast, a blast. Well, so my son made. He said, "Make sure you mention Dad that he was on an episode of Psych, as it's his oh, favorite show." So I was yes. like, "Okay, I'll mention it." I was like, "You'd know." <laughs> <laughs> they were those two guys are amazing. The, the whole yeah. cast is great. Uh, oh, that show that show's so funny. Yeah, so, yeah. so such a good uh, show. And then, if I remember right, weren't you? You were like a doctor on the resident, or not the resident doctor on the fugitive. <laughs> sort of yes I, like was. I was but all you can see are my ears because i've got a ma face mask and goggles <laughs> on you can hear my voice and hadn't changed much but you, you can tell it's because it's my ears you know yeah. which doctor is me you know? yeah 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 it's not uh it's it's, it's uh I, i've always said i've got this like i've got the worst superpower that's ever happened it's it's just i'm filled up with all this knowledge of what people have done what they've been it's just nerdy knowledge right. and then so i spent my whole life trying to figure out what to do with it and i was like podcasting <laughs> <laughs> so i got a question for you then i don't want to take yeah. it off of a tangent but uh uh what is your favorite classic my classic i mean say pre-70s uh-oh my oops did it go out there we go uh 
say pre 70s, 60s, even sci-fi, classic sci-fi. What is your favorite? Uh, it'd have to be Star Trek for the 60s. All right. All right. Yeah. Is, the there original. A film? is there a film? Yeah. Um, if I had to, let's see, if I had to pick, a, you know, this is uh, late 60s, early 70s. You know, the ones that at that time I absolutely loved was the Planet of the Apes films. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just a, I was a big fan as a kid. I just I mean I love 2001 and and some of those were terrific. I was a big uh Universal Mar uh, uh monster fan. You know, I'd stay up and watch uh, Boris Karloff and, oh, and yeah. Bella yeah. Lugosi and Lon Chaney and that, and that of course those were much older films but right. I was watching them at the at that time. Do you have one from like the 60s? I I have some from the 50s late yeah, yeah. 50s primarily the 50s that was kind of my 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 favorite but uh i haven't done it in a couple of a couple of years but i had a ritual every august when it was too hot and it's usually around the u.s open because i was i would uh watch a lot of tennis and then yeah. uh but i would pick one day where all i did was watch uh old sci-fi and it would be uh love it forbidden planet uh when worlds collide and uh, War of the Worlds. And I would just watch them back to back. I'd crank the AC up in my oh. little apartment and I would just get lost in the sci those old sci-fi. I loved them, especially especially when worlds collide. It's yeah, such yeah. a primal uh, message about hope and perseverance and not to mention the, the crazy old cranky doctor, the guy, the crazy old rich, rich guy in the wheelchair gets his due, you know? Yeah, those um, are great. Those are all great movies. I mean, Forbidden yeah. Planet, you had the, you know, the the great robot that, yeah. you know, kind of, I'm assuming, kind of inspired Lost in Space's uh, robot. I was a big H.G. Right. Wells fan. So, oh, Weird yes. Worlds, I was, yeah, that's definitely uh, up there for me. Although, uh, some of his other stuff, I like just as well. You know, Time Machine. And Time Visible, Machine. You Absolutely. know, Invisible Man, I thought was really good. But, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that was a fun time, you know, as a kid when, uh, when cable first came out, which for us, it was only like TBS. That's all it was, but that's all uh, they showed. They just showed the old fifties and sixties sci-fi movies, television shows. And that, that's kind of, I think a big reason why I love it so much. Cause that's kind of what I grew up on. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, same thing with like three stooges and stuff. Cause that's what they oh, were showing. God, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think the simplicity in storytelling is what I miss in contemporary films now. I can appreciate yeah. CGI. I can appreciate a lot of things. But I really, as an actor, I appreciate simple storytelling, which is what I love in books yeah. as well. I can appreciate a great writer, but if I can't, or great writing, but if I can't get into the story and be taking on the journey, then I, I generally put the, that's right. put the book down. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah, you just want a good story. I've, I say, yes. say it all the time. I'm big on the dialogue. I like yep. good. I would rather have really strong dialogue, even a science fiction movie, than all the effects. I don't really need the effects. You know, yes. I can use my imagination for that stuff. Exactly. I, want, I want the, uh, you know, the uh, character <clears throat> development and the interaction, the dialogue. That's the part I love. Absolutely. I'm with you 100%. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and thankfully, it seems like, we're inching back towards some of that. You know, we went through that. Everything had to be a bigger blockbuster right. and just all special effects. And and I think some of the story kind of suffered, but it seems like maybe we're getting a little bit more of just the good stories. I, I, it's not a terrible time to watch TV or go to the movies. No, right? no, no. Absolutely. There's so much, there's so much great content out there. So yeah. Not, yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty terrific. Um, do you still, I asked um, uh, Gabrielle this, but do you still stay in touch with the crew from 90210? Yeah, I mean, Gab, Gab and I talk fairly frequently, and I saw her in New York when I was, I was just there working on a, on a show, and I saw her then, and uh, we'll see each other again in a couple of weeks. Uh, but, and I've kept in touch with those, the rest of the crew. I'll, I'll, I'll text with Jason on occasion. Yeah. Because uh, they, they live elsewhere now. They don't live in, in L.A. Uh, I would see Luke on occasion before he passed. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't yeah, seen. That was awful. Yeah, that, that's a uh, that's a whole other story. I I, yeah. I still can't even. I, I can't. Uh -huh. 
it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, such a such a really truly amazing man. Yeah. But I've run into I've run into Ian at Costco a couple of times. I've run into uh, yeah I run into Brian you know very rarely. But I don't I have not seen Tori or Jenny in twenty years or maybe even wow. longer. Yeah. Yeah. But Gab Gab and I formed a bond and we we've stayed best friends. I know we when I was talking with her, I mean, she had just terrific things to say about you and stuff. But she said, but you know uh, what's, "What's funny is that it does. It feels like we're still married. We actually <laughs> we fell into that we fell into that rhythm very quickly. And I may not see her for years because of the pandemic, whatever. We had dinner in New York. It felt like we were still married. Yeah. Um, even though I know she's got a husband. Well, that's it, that's kind of that's what I'm saying. She because she asked me, she's like, you know who." you should talk to for this show. She's like, you should talk to my husband. And she's like, <laughs> I'm, I mean, Mark. <laughs> I was like, I actually knew who you meant. <laughs> Her cheating husband. Yeah. Her cheating husband. That guy was no good. No good at all. <laughs> and he wore so much plaid. What was he thinking? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we, we don't want to get into 80s and 90s fashion because none of us look good. <laughs> we have better hair though. Oh, I had well, I actually had hair back then. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I always said I, I had the I know me too. I had the uh kind of like the Sean Cassidy feathered hair back oh, then. Oh man. So you were the kind of guys I couldn't stand because <laughs> I'd spend hours blow drying and parting. Yeah. Had really frizzy hair, big frizzy hair. I spent hours trying to look like John Travolta. Then you'd walk out into Beaumont, Texas, heat, you know, for five yeah, seconds. Yeah. yeah. Well, I always say I didn't appreciate it because it took so long to fool with. And then one day it was like, all right, buddy, I'm out of here. And now I'm like, oh, I wish I had that hair back. <laughs> Every, it's funny because I'll have a dream about, I'll wake up and I go, wow, my hair's growing back. Wow. <laughs> then you wake up and you go and look in the mirror and you go, oh, well, whatever. So much easier now, though. Oh yeah, you know you don't have to do anything. To I can, I can like delay getting ready to go somewhere. <laughs> or I don't know. Back then, it probably took me forty-five minutes to get it ready. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> A lot I'm of uh, what is it? The uh, the Aquanet. You know to oh, hold it in place. Right? Yeah. Oh no! I really? didn't have to do the sides, but I had a cowlick right here, and I had to I had to paste that down. Or else oh it would gosh. stand straight up. Yeah, it was awful. Because <laughs> other than that, though, it was great hair. <laughs> <laughs> but Mark, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time and hanging in there. You you crawled around and came back on. That was pretty great. <laughs> I managed to figure it out. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, I I tried to get my parents to watch this podcast when it first came out, and they're extremely non technical. So I went to their house. I, I well, I have my son set it up for him. All they had to do was push a button and start playing, and stuff. So both of them were, were saying, "Well, we talk to you every day." You know, what, <laughs> I'm like, "What's what? the big deal, Mike?" Yeah, yeah. I, like I talk to you every day, and I'm like, "There might be something. Maybe you'll find something new." And they're like, "No, we it's, we talk every day." So yeah, I was like, "Okay." <laughs> that's funny that's funny so a couple of quick things mark for uh yeah. you go. um anything you're currently working on that we can keep an eye out for well well i ju we just finished uh sadly it didn't get renewed but um it was a great show and i i encourage all your 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 uh uh, uh followers to to watch the end game and it's available on hulu and nbc's peacock so it was an NBC yeah, yeah. show that I was shooting in New York, and I had the best time of my professional life doing it, uh, working with an amazing crew, an amazing cast. Oh, that's uh, terrific. And it's a really cool show. It's a fun show. I know. It's on our it's on our list to, to kind of binge watch through it, but that's disappointing that they're not bringing it back. I'd heard we were really good things we, about it. We thought that they would because it had a really strong fan base. Um, you know, who knows what goes into their decisions. Mm. Um, but I I will relish those four and a half months in New York the rest of my life. It was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good cast. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so, so last thing, um, where can we find you on social media? Uh, right now, I'm just, I'm just doing Instagram. 
Yeah, that's and, the best uh, one. That's yeah, the nice so one. Under my name. So uh, don't do Facebook anymore and, and, and Twitter. Bye bye. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm on Instagram. Yeah, very good. Yeah, Instagram. Yes. That's the positive. You know, everything's you know the pictures. And it's all real nice. Right. Facebook, Facebook, it's it's kind of hit and miss. And then Twitter, you only go on Twitter if you're angry about something. <laughs> I know. And then you just get even angrier when you're off. Oh yeah, it doesn't help. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's no good. Well, Mark, thank you so much. If you hold thank on, thank you, Mike. Oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, I hope you'll come back at some point. I'd love that. I'd love that. Yeah, yeah. Hold on one. Mark Espinoza. Um, love that. What a nice guy. I knew he would be. Um, those of you that watched our, my interview with uh, Gabrielle, uh, she talked about just what a terrific guy he was. And he absolutely was just, just wonderful and we you know his uh his wi-fi dropped you know and i caught it pretty early so hopefully you guys didn't have too uh too long of a, a delay waiting uh and i would have been just just very willing to to reschedule that uh because it took him a little while to get back on but he hung in there with me and came back and i just really really appreciated talking with him just a just a really good guy and so talented I love his acting. You know, we kind of, we bounced around. We talked a little bit about some of his stuff. I sure I'm sure most of you know him from uh, um, Beverly Hills 90210. But he's uh, he's done a lot of shows that I just think he's uh, really good. And he was on uh, Mayans. He played Nico, and I thought he did a terrific job with that. He showed up on uh, Parenthood, which I love that show. He, uh, he was on House. He's a uh, uh, it was one of the NCIS, NCIS LA. Oh, I should have asked him about American Horror Story because he had a, a really good uh, uh, part uh, in that. Uh, he was on JAG. You know, he did uh, several uh, soap operas, and and I thought uh, it was uh, was really good on those. It's, um, Bold and the Bold and the Beautiful was one. There was a couple of others. He's really good in that. He's just a really talented actor. And he gave me another show in game to, to check out, which was on my list anyway. So now I'm going to put that at the top and we'll, uh, we'll watch that over the weekend. That'll be a blast. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in again this time. Um, we posted our 411, 411th episode today. I, I'm just amazed at that number. We've been doing this for three and a half years. That's uh, uh, not easy to get to, but I'm so grateful that you've, uh, you know, you've allowed us to do that and you stuck with us through that. Thank you so much. You know, if, if you're, if you're watching for the first time or you haven't done so yet, we're still trying to grow that YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. If you could subscribe, that would really help this little father and son team out. We really appreciate that. Um, We've got all 411 episodes is on our website, meistercon.com, audio and video. So you can watch either one or listen to it, however you uh, prefer to uh, consume your podcast. You know, if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, if we're uh, covering a convention, that'll be on the website, meistercon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.